Okay, so for this video, we will talk about the pavement design. Pavements are among the costliest items associated with highway construction and maintenance and are largely responsible for making the United States highway system the most expensive public works project undertaken by any society. Because the pavement and associated shoulder structures are the most expensive items to construct and maintain, it is important for highway engineers to have a basic understanding of pavement design principles. So in highway construction, the pavement itself is a major work item. Ibig sabihin, a huge portion of the budget allotted for highway construction ay napupunta sa pavement pa lamang. And generally, or in general, highway construction is among the costliest project undertaken by any society. Why? Kasi yung highway system naman, hindi siya na kikita or hindi siya located sa isang lugar lang, hindi siya located sa isang province or sa isang state lang. It accommodates the entire country. So, like for example, in the Philippines, according to the road data provided by the government, as of October 15, 2019, we have a total of 33,018.25 kilometers of road. So, imagine kung gano'ng kahaba yan. And 97.18% of that are already paved. So, it is either asphalt or concrete pavement. And then, the remaining 2.82% are still unpaved. So, it is either gravel or earth road. So, ano ba yung purpose ng pavement? So, fundamentally, a paved surface performs two basic functions. First one, it helps guide drivers by giving them a visual perspective of the horizontal and vertical alignment of the traveled path thus giving drivers information relating to the driving task and the steering control of the vehicle. So, siya yung nagsisilbing guide sa mga driver at nagseset ng limitations kung hanggang saan lang pwede mag-drive ang ating um, motoring public. And then, it support vehicle loads. So, the primary function or one of the primary functions of pavement is to transmit loads to the subbase and underlying soils. So, yung load induced by the moving vehicles ay natatransmit sa pavement. And then, itinatransmit naman ng pavement sa ating subgrade at a level that is acceptable and bearable depending upon on the engineering property of the subgrade. So, we have two general types of pavements. We have the flexible pavement and the rigid pavements. And some other types include composite pavements, continuously reinforced pavements, and post-tensioned pavements. So, ano being flexible pavement? It is constructed with asphaltic cement and aggregates and usually consists of several layers. So, this figure represents a section of a flexible pavement. So, meron tayong apat na layers. The bottom most layer is the subgrade or the soil yun yung mismong soil kung saan natin ipapatang yung ating pavement. And it is usually scarified. Its upper 6 to 8 inches is usually scarified and blended para magkameron tayo ng uniform material bago siya i-compact. So, yung subgrade, i-kinocompact muna siya para mas gumanda yung kanyang engineering property. So, paano natin malalaman yung uh, rate of compaction or kung gano'n na siya cadence? Meron tayong tinatawag na test or meron tayong ginagamit na test, ginagawang test, it is called the field density test. So, nadidetermine niya kung gano'ng kadens yung ating subgrade bago, siya nat bago natin siya latagan ng subbase. Then, the next one is the subbase, which is usually 4 to 10 inches thick. So, usually consists of crushed aggregate. And then, the next one is the base, 4 to 10 inches thick. It is often made of crushed aggregates which are either unstabilized or stabilized with a cementing material. And the topmost layer is the asphaltic concrete layer which is a mixture of asphalt cement and aggregates. So it is usually 2 to 4 inches thick. So ito yung itsura ng flexible pavement that is very familiar kasi puro ganyan or madaming ganyan sa ating highway system. Next, we have the rigid pavements. 
It is constructed with Portland cement concrete or PCC and aggregates. So this figure shows a representation of the section of a rigid pavement. So meron tayong tatlong layer. The bottommost layer still is the subgrade or the soil, which is usually scarified and blended before it is compacted. Next, the base course, which is usually 4 to 8 inches, but this is optional, depending on the engineering property of the subgrade. So, kung maganda naman yung engineering property ng subgrade, pwede hindi na natin siya lagyan ng base course. And then, the most layer is the Portland cement concrete slab. So, kung mapapansin nyo, um, meron tayong load transfer device na ginagamit that is called the dowel. So, dowel bars are short steel bars that provide a mechanical connection between slabs and or between slabs without restricting horizontal joint movement. So, ini-increase niya yung load transfer efficiency by allowing the leaf slab to assume some of the loads before the load is actually over it. And then, meron tayong joint uh, dito, ang tawag dyan ay contraction joint. So, ano ba yung purpose ng contraction joint? A contraction joint is a sod formed or tool groove in a concrete slab that creates weakened vertical plane. So, nire-regulate niya yung location ng tracking caused by dimensional changes in the slab. Ito naman yung itsura ng rigid pavement sa actual. And for some other types of pavements, we have the composite pavement. So, ang composite pavement is a combination of rigid and flexible pavement. So, kung mapapansin nyo, yung first three layers natin from the bottom, we have the subgrade, subbase, and the concrete base. Yun din yung layer na meron ang ating rigid pavement. Dapat lang ng overlay ng asphalt. So, kapag ganyan yung itsura ng ating pavement, that is called the composite pavement. And then, we have the continuously reinforced pavement. So, from the term itself, reinforced, meaning meron siyang steel reinforcement. So, yung continuously reinforced concrete does not require any contraction joints, unlike the unreinforced rigid pavements. Transverse cracks are allowed to form but are held tightly together with continuous reinforcing steel. The primary function of the pavement structure is to reduce and distribute the surface stresses at an acceptable level at the subgrade. A flexible pavement reduces the stresses by distributing the traffic wheel loads over greater and greater areas through the individual layers until the stress at the subgrade is at an acceptably low level. So, kung mapapansin nyo sa figure, yung distribution ng load sa bawat layer ay in a shape of a cone. Meaning, palaki ng palaki yung area na na-apply ng load hanggang makarating siya sa subgrade. So, pagdating sa subgrade, mas malaking area na yung uh, nasasakop ng load, therefore, reducing the stress. Kasi stress is force over area. So, paglaki ng area, pagliit ng stress. So, yun yung purpose ng pavement. There are several acceptable flexible pavement design procedures available and that includes the following. The first one is the Asphalt Institute Method, the National Stone Association Procedure, the Shell Procedure, and the Mechanistic Empirical Pavement Design Guide. So, yung Asphalt Institute Method, um, dinevelop siya ng Asphalt Institute which is an international trade association of petroleum asphalt producers, manufacturers, and affiliated businesses. So, yung shell procedure naman, the method is based on a model in which the pavement structure is regarded as a linear, elastic, multi-layered system in which the materials are characterized by their modulus of elasticity and Poisson's ratio. And then, the mechanistic empirical pavement design guide, ang sabi dito, mechanics is the science of motion and the action of forces on bodies. Thus, a mechanistic approach seeks to explain phenomena only by reference to physical causes.